Today, Kevin is going to be making Gaston's Giant Cinnamon Rolls. These are from Fantasyland in the Magic Kingdom. This is from the unofficial Disney Parks cookbook. This was sent to us from George Ann, so thank you, George Ann. This recipe is divided up into four sections. So, Kevin's going to tell us how he's going to divide it, divide it up and what ingredients we need first. So, uh, you got the dough and the filling. And then you've got a cream cheese frosting and a butterscotch topping. Not even going to worry about that right now, but you do want to go ahead for your filling and lay out your, um, you need one cup of salted butter softened. Go ahead and lay that out at the beginning so it can be sitting out and softening up. So for the dough, what I need was, um, you need to preheat your oven to 375. You need to get a nine by 13 pan, spray it with cooking spray and just have it ready. We need um, half a cup of salted butter melted. We need one and a half cups of whole milk, six and a half cups of all-purpose flour. You need two uh, packages of active dry yeast. We just use the rapid dries. You need a half cup of granulated sugar, one teaspoon of salt, half cup of room temperature water, and then the two large eggs. So what we're gonna do is in a bowl, and that's with my milk right here, I'm just gonna combine my eggs, and not my eggs, my butter and my milk together and I just melt my butter in the microwave it's just quicker and easier that way and I've got a fork here just to make sure it's just mixed together I don't know how important it is to do this but it'll definitely cool off your melted butter all right so in your mixer you do need a mixer for this um, you're going to need your paddle and you're also going to need your dough hook so we're going to combine um, Two and a half cups of the flour. It takes a lot of yeast. I'm surprised it takes two packages. That's, that's a lot of yeast. And then you need the sugar and the salt. And then we're going to add the uh, water, eggs, and butter. And we're going to slowly mix it. So what we're going to do, this is all mixed together. It's really a smooth, pretty smooth batter. So we're going to add half cups of flour into this until it starts forming um, a ball. Okay, so I've, I've made this to the point, it's gotten to the point where it's so thick that the paddle doesn't do a good job. So I'm gonna switch over to my dough hook, which is why I have it. And I haven't added all my flour yet. So that's, uh, I'm still adding flour, but the dough hook is gonna to have to take over. It's pretty much forming a ball. I don't want to turn it on now because it's loud. But you need to knead it with the knead, with the dough hook for five minutes and let it let it uh, just knead out, and then I'll be back. So that's all kneaded. It's been kneading for five minutes, and what you're supposed to do is remove. You can see it wraps itself up way up here, and I've turned this oven on like a couple times and scraped it, and it still gets up at the top. I, uh, it's annoying. Um, anyway, what you're supposed to do is it's very sticky dough. I mean, it's sticky, sticky. Let me get some flour on my hands. What you're supposed to do basically is um, take it out of the bowl real quick and just throw some flour in the bowl and let it rise. So I'm going to take this out. And this is this is where the fun part is, is getting this out of this bowl. And you could have needed this on the counter too. It was just taking you a while. So then you sprinkle some of this flour in the bottom of your bowl so it doesn't stick. Usually you put oil in the bowl so it doesn't stick, but this doesn't say that. 
it says flour. So we got it in there. We're gonna let that put, go put that back in there and we're gonna let it rise for 10 minutes. While that's rising, I'm gonna be right back and we'll do the uh, cinnamon uh, filling. All right, so now we're doing the cinnamon filling. So we need two cups of light brown sugar, two tablespoons of ground cinnamon, one cup of salted butter softened, so don't melt it, just soften, and you'll need a fourth of a cup of salted butter melted. And you're, you're not gonna use this right off, so kind of set that to the side. So what you wanna do in a bowl of some kind, we're gonna use the, the mixing bowl. You're gonna mix the brown sugar, the cinnamon, and the softened butter, butter together. And I'm actually gonna cream this butter just a little bit to make sure it's smooth. Yeah, you can see it, it kind of just smoothed out the butter a little bit. And now I'm gonna add my brown sugar and my um, cinnamon. Brown sugar and uh, buttermilk mixture is, is perfect. It's perfectly mixed up. Um, we've got parchment paper on our table because you have to roll this out into a two by three sheet of uh, dough. So it's, it's gonna be pretty big. It didn't mention flouring it. Um, and parchment paper, I may not even have to have floured it, but just to be safe, and sorry, I put a little flour out there. I've got a rolling pin. I've got my flour just in case I need it. And I've got my pastry cutter or my cutter, whatever you call it. Um, I got a little flour on my hands because I just know it was really sticky when it went in. So we'll see how sticky it is now. And this is the part I'm not necessarily looking forward to. <laughs> it's rolling this out. Um, it's a pretty soft dough though. I do have to say that. Uh, the bad thing is parchment paper likes to slide around a lot. So. But our countertop, we t Kevin actually got a ruler out and, uh, and measured it. And we didn't have enough space on our regular countertop. So um, I would recommend you use your kitchen table for this. So he did use, like I said, he got the ruler. And so he knows I know about- roughly about how big it goes. Yes. And I've, I've got the ruler over there. I can, I can measure it again. Right. It's a very elastic dough. Right, so now I'm going to take my, my filling and I'm just let me just double check. Close enough. <laughs> Close enough for government work, right? So I'm gonna take my filling and I'm gonna spread over the entire thing. All right, so now you want to do it like a jelly roll. And you're going to start on the, on the thin end and roll it this way. Um, actually, I may want to start at the other end because it's narrower. And put it on the inside. got my pan, I've got my melted butter here. And it basically, while this thing's huge, you're really only gonna make two big ones, um, which is a little strange, but that's how it is. So I'm gonna, you wanna cut it in the middle. And if you got, don't have one of these, you can just use a knife. Um, and then you, ooh, that looks really pretty, look at that. That does look pretty. And then you're gonna go six inches in uh, from this, where you cut it from the center, which is still huge. 
Is that one? That's one. Oh my gosh. And you want to put these. Oh my goodness. Roll side down in your pan. And you want to pour your butter over top of them. Do you save some butter for no. the uh, rest of it? No, you just pour, pour it over. Now it does say in the recipe book um, to use the other one, to use the remainder to make regular size ones. So I'll probably do that as well, but you just put those on a baking sheet and, and stuff. So I'm gonna let this sit for 30 minutes and let it rise for 30 minutes, just like it is. So I'm gonna move it over on top of my stove actually where it's a little warmer and let it rise. All right, so for the remainder, we've got a pan here with some just the cooking spray in the bottom again. And um, you just want to cut these in one to two inches. I'm going to do them about an inch and a half um, pieces. And you just want to put them in the uh, in your pan. And they're still going to be pretty good size. throw away these pieces unless you just want to eat raw dough I guess you could um, these you don't it doesn't say to put butter on these and when I put when I put the other ones in the butt the, they don't have it doesn't even say you have to let these rise but I'm gonna let them sit just as long as the big pieces and then we'll be back I'll tell you how long to bake all of it so they've been it's been um, half an hour and they're ready to go in the oven they're gonna go in the oven for 20 minutes and then once they come out of the oven for the 20 minutes you're gonna loosely cover them with aluminum foil and then bake them for another 10 minutes this pan is gonna just bake for 20 minutes and that's it. You don't, like I said, you don't put any butter or anything on them. You don't put aluminum on them. They just bake for 20 minutes and take them out. Okay, now we're gonna make the cream cheese frosting and the butterscotch topping. It's two different things. So for the cream cheese frosting, you need an eight ounce package of cream cheese. You need a fourth of a cup of salted butter, which is a half a stick, two cups of confectionery sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla, three tablespoons of heavy cream, and then an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. So that's for that. Then for the butterscotch topping, you need a half cup of brown sugar, four tablespoons or half a stick of salted butter, um, a half a cup of heavy cream, fourth a teaspoon of salt, and then a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So you need two different saucepans. And in the first saucepan, we're gonna combine, you're gonna add the cream cheese and butter and, until it's melted. It's gone. That brown sugar smells so good. Um, then the other one you're going to um, put the brown sugar, butter, and cream in and you're going to let it melt. And you're going to bring it to a boil and let it boil for five minutes. So brown sugar, butter, and cream. This is gonna, I'm just gonna melt this all down and just get it all melted, but you do need to stir this one um, frequently while it's um, boiling, because it will boil for five minutes, but it may stick. So you just wanna make sure you stir it up really good. And this one's gonna take a while to, to melt, because cream cheese, I don't know that I've ever melted cream cheese, to be honest with you, uh, not in a pan. So this is gonna get melted, and then it's, once it's melted, then we'll add the other stuff. Um, the actual big, I can tell you, the, the cinnamon rolls that are the regular size, look beautiful i mean they look gorgeous the big ones are awful looking <laughs> they've they've fallen over one of them fallen over and like collapsed i mean the whole sides busted out of it the other one's kind of falling sideways and um it doesn't look too pretty either so we'll see what it looks like when it comes out but um right now they're not looking good <laughs> this started to boil so i've got my timer set for five minutes i'm gonna let, let it stir it every once in a while but it's gonna it's gonna keep going now for the cream cheese, it's all melted now. So I'm gonna turn off the heat, take it off the heat, and I'm gonna add my powdered sugar. Hopefully a little bit at a time. Don't wanna make a mess is what I meant. And my vanilla and salt will go in as well. So 
this is your cream cheese frosting and it's gonna we're gonna set it aside and it's gonna cool off a little bit it'll thicken up a bit there's the small ones <laughs> these big ones are just a mess I mean that's way Gaston's I can just tell you right now Gaston's are not that big um, but but we're following the recipe so so you want to loosely cover these with aluminum and put them back in the oven for 10 minutes all right so this is the butterscotch sauce this is the one with the brown sugar in them so I'm going to add the salt stir it up really good and the vanilla And stir it up really good and then you're gonna let this set aside basically what you want to do is just let them cool off but I may go ahead and put the um, the cream cheese sauce on top of the small ones that I've already come out because it's cooled off a little bit it's gonna spread it's still hot but it's not as hot as um, I don't think it'll hurt it any so I'll be right back so here's my cream cheese frosting I'm just gonna it's it's still pretty pretty warm but I'm just gonna spread it on Spread it on the top of these because they, they look really, really good. And then my butterscotch, like I said, it's just, it's literally just coming out, but it's going to be, it's going to be super hot. what they look like um, with the aluminum removed you can see they just this one literally broke apart and collapsed I think that one broke as well and and the basically what happened was the outside dough split I mean you can see it it's on this side it's just split and it didn't hold together so it just fell over um, and blew apart so I, um, we're gonna do our best to get them out and put stuff on them we'll see what they look like okay this is it that's the prettiest it's gonna get <laughs> just to be honest with you so this is the cream cheese frosting. I can say it smells really, really good. The cinnamon um, and sugar mix really does smell good. All right, so this is the butterscotch and we're gonna, I'm gonna attempt to drizzle this a little bit. Disney parks have sold cinnamon rolls for a long time, regular boring sized cinnamon rolls. But in 2012, they upped their cinnamon roll game when they introduced Gaston's giant cinnamon rolls to their lineup. It's about an eight inch square in size and is smothered in frosting and butterscotch topping. It is perfectly made for the man who eats five dozen eggs each day or your whole family. And so, like I said, uh, Gaston's Tavern is in Magic Kingdom. Uh, this, let me just say. Is ridiculous. That picture is a lie. This picture is a lie. This There's no the way that that picture is, is that tall um, thing. No, this picture is a knot. And Kevin, you saw he measured. It, they made you make it too tall. It needed to be wider so, yeah, first, so that it wouldn't topple. It needed to be uh, wider and not so tall. Uh, but this is just a complete and utter lie. That complete. is probably one of these. It's a regular, Which, yes. If you look at it, that's beautiful. It I is. I mean, that is, looks really, really good. So if you wanted to use this recipe and make regular cinnamon rolls. Yeah, do them an inch and a half. Right. Came out perfect. I told Kevin, this looks like a turkey that its head's been cut off. Well, that's the, what it looks like. The problem like. was the, the the dough busted out on one side, and once it did that, it just all fell down that side. Mm -hmm. um, there was no holding it up. It's not stiff enough to hold up. Now, I've seen pictures of people that have done this recipe, and theirs was upright, but it was a really tall, mm -hmm. it didn't look like the Gaston. It's just like, you know, it just didn't look no. like it. It's just, Gastons aren't tall, they're fat. No. So anyway, I just think it's a. Uh, Anytime the directions we go to Walt Disney World, we order the cinnamon roll, and I'll be honest with you, 
That's one of our favorite things to it's do. It's one of our favorite things to do, but I've seen recent pictures of the cinnamon roll and it looks different than when we were last there. If I can find the footage, and then I will insert the footage. I'll put it the footage at the end. I'll add it. I'll add it to the end of the video so that you can see the actual size because this isn't it. This, I don't know what the author of the cookbook was thinking. This is not the size. No. no. Even if it had have not toppled over, it was way too tall. So it still isn't right. Mm -hmm. It's good though. I love the flavor of eat this instead of that. Oh, okay. Eat this, not that. Well, that, that's, I mean, that's fine, but this is more realistic. Okay, here we go. It's cooked. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. I like that cinnamon. So the recipe, it's a good recipe for a cinnamon roll. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that for Gaston, I think it failed. I do not think this represents Gaston as far as the the size of it goes. Mm. Mm. Man, the flavors are excellent. You know I what? I love the flavor. I love the edge pieces. Yeah. They got a little um, crisp around yeah. the edges. One thing I would do different is I put these in the, the smaller ones. That I'm not even talk about that. That caramel sauce is delicious. Um, the butterscotch. I mean the butterscotch. Uh, it's caramel. Oh, it's, it's caramel so sauce. Good. Um, the regular size ones, the normal ones that you would really make, um, you can make them up to two inches thick, so they could be thicker than this. I don't think I'd make them any thicker than this, but that because that's a good size to me. Um, don't butt them next to each other because we got a smaller pan thing, and butting them next to each other would make them really good. Mm. I think leaving them a little separate to where they've got a little airspace around them would crisp them up a little around the outside. You yeah, because where they're touching, they're not as crisp, mm -hmm. so you're missing that crispness on the edges. So I would just separate them out a little bit more in the pan and then bake them. Um, but I would make them this size. Don't even do that. If you wanted to make thick ones, make them like three inches thick, not six inches thick. You know that was ridiculous. Do three inches if you want a thick one, um, and it's probably less likely to fall over. It's gonna cook well and all that stuff. So anyway, I will say that. For all the griping that we both have done, this is an excellent recipe. The flavor is incredible. My only like gripe is about the extra Mine tall too. Mine roll. too. Be well, because you think you're going in thinking, as fans of Gaston's Tavern, you're thinking I'm going to make Gaston's uh, cinnamon rolls, and this isn't it. So that was a failure in that way. So we did gripe about that, but I think with reason. But this is an excellent, excellent recipe. Mm -hmm. This is better than like... Pillsbury. Like, oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say. If you buy any of those cinnamon rolls, I don't care what brand you bought, this is better. This tastes better. The flavor is absolutely incredible. Mm, love very, it. Very, very good. Love the cinnamon. Love the, the sweetness of it. That caramel sauce, the butterscotch sauce, um, and with that cream cheese frosting. And I could have used more. There's still some in the pan. Oh that, yeah, so. we still have. Some. Well, we haven't frosted our other one, so there's another giant one that can be frosted, or you could add more to what you have. But this is incredible. And Kevin um, brought up the point: if you wanted to add um, pecans or something, if you wanted to um, uh, add pecans to the top, you absolutely could. Uh, so I do think it's a good recipe to make. Just don't do the giant ones. Make them all. Make them all an inch and a half thick. Yes, that's the way you need and to do it. And then separate them out in the pan a little bit to where there's some air around them. They're, they're, they're wonderful. Yes. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Okay, we're in Gaston's Tavern. We're having breakfast. This is a blend cinnamon roll. It was 425. It's huge. So Kevin and I are going to split it because we have. Uh, lunch reservations for later.